next video, we're going to be going over how to use Curve Optimizer and Curve Shaper on a new 9950X. So you can see this is the Ryzen 9950X, the new one. How to get this overclocked so that it can do single thread boosts at 5.9 gigahertz to improve uh, the lightly thread performance while also doing a, a clock speed offset using the PBO settings in the BIOS as well as using Curve Optimizer in conjunction with Curve Shaper to get better boost frequency. Uh, I may also show how to get like the latency on the memory like this down to like 64. This is running the RAM at 8,000 mega transfers. Uh, this is on an X670E ASRock Steel Legend, as shown up here. So let's go ahead and get into the BIOS and make this a quick overclock tutorial. Once we're in the BIOS, we're going to want to set the XMP profile if you haven't already done that. So in this case, on an ASRock board, you're going to go to this where it says DRAM profile configuration. We're going to open that up, and then that is going to have the SPD profiles that are preloaded on the DRAM dims themselves so in this case this memory kit that i'm using has both a jdec 5600 profile and an xmp 8000 profile if it had an expo profile they would be in there as well but it doesn't matter you can use xmp or expo it works totally fine so we're going to load the xmp profile here for 8000 mega transfers at 1.35 volts then when we hit escape to go back out you'll notice that it's already programmed the appropriate voltages as well as the divider mode and soc voltage now because i'm not doing anything with the fabric overclocking in this video we don't need 1.3 1.3 is the safe maximum that's why it's in red we don't need this much voltage so i'm going to manually set this to 1.2 volts bring that down and that's all we really need so now i have the fabric at 2000 the U clock is going to also be 2000 because the mem clock is 4000, which is half of 8000. So now everything is nicely synchronized in terms of our memory. Uh, the other thing too, the one thing that we can do here to get better performance is you can manually tune the TREFI value. I like to use 49,920 because it's not the extreme max 65,000 that is shown over here on the right. So it's like a happy medium. So you don't really have to worry too much about it being stable because my experience is this is a good number overall for stability and much, much lower latency. In this case, 64 nanoseconds of latency on the RAM. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go over to the advanced tab. And here is where like all the different uh, AMD common bio settings and the platform BIOS settings are going to be, but we're going to be going to AMD overclocking. There's going to be a warning. You're going to have to accept this to continue. Basically, this is saying that overclocking is not covered. It's not guaranteed, and it could damage the hardware if you don't know what you're doing. So you have to proceed with caution. After accepting that, we're going to find the precision boost overdrive menu in here, and we go in there. The default is auto. We're going to set this to advanced. And then here, this gives us the PBO limits, the scalar controller, the which will override that. And then we will also have access to Curve Optimizer. And if you're on a 9000 series CPU, you also get Curve Shaper. So we're going to be changing all of these. So the first thing, what you can do, this is optional. You, If you want to run it in what's known as the unlimited power mode, you would set this to motherboard. But I'm going to leave this on auto because I don't really need it to run at insane amounts of power. Next, we're going to set the Precision Boost Overdrive Scalar Control to manual. And here, what this does is this will override the health management system for the silicon. So this is going to basically tell the processor to use higher voltage while boosting more frequently. So I'm going to set this to 10x. You can choose whichever one you feel comfortable doing. Now we want to set the CPU boost clock override. We're going to set this to enable positive. What this does is this, and the nice thing about ASRock's motherboard you can see on the right here, it tells you what it's doing. Basically, this allows you 
to key in a value to raise the max frequency. But this is a max frequency target. This is not a offset. So this is this is not going to guarantee that the CPU runs at this higher speed. It's going to just raise the limit saying, hey, instead of 5.7 gigahertz, now if we add 200 megahertz, which is the maximum allowable amount, um, if I try to put 300 in here, it's going to go back to 200. So you can see 200 is the maximum. So this will allow it to raise from 5.7 to 5.9. And this is the secret setting which will allow it, with the more aggressive voltage, it will allow it to run at a higher frequency. Now, the problem with doing higher voltage more aggressively is that's going to raise the temperatures especially if you raise the PBO limit using motherboard settings. So the way we offset this now is we have to apply a negative voltage offset using Curve Optimizer and Curve Shaper to bring the overall voltage down so that the CPU can run at lower temperatures and boost at higher frequencies in those short durations. So that's basically how we... This is kind of raising power, or raising voltage, I should say, during boost, whereas these are going to reel that back down so that you're going to take advantage of the margin in the silicon so that it can boost more efficiently. So first we're going to go into Curve Optimizer. Most people are probably already familiar with Curve Optimizer. If you're on a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7, you can do all core and set typically a negative positive override and then like you know whatever magnitude you want to try to use as long as it's stable but if we're on a dual ccd so in this case i'm on a 9950x this would be the same if you're on a 9900x you can do per core or you can do per ccd so if you're on a dual ccd chip you can go with a per ccd which can be useful so what i've done here is I've put a negative offset. So if you do positive, this is going to raise the voltage, which means it will probably not be able to boost as high because it will heat up faster. So you typically don't use positive unless you're doing like extreme overclocking using LN2 or phase change. So I'm going to do negative 15 on the better performing CCD. So in general, CCD zero has the voltage frequency curve that can go to 5.7 by default. So this is the one that we're going to try to get to 5.9 gigahertz. And then CCD1, this is the lower bend CCD. So this is the one that is more leaky. It may not be able to hit the higher speeds. So this one tops out around 5.5 to 5.6 gigahertz, but with the 200 megahertz offset from PBO, this will be able to do up to 5.6, 5.7 more frequently. So this one I'm going to do negative 10, that one I'm going to do negative 15, because this is my better bend CCD. So we're going to apply a more, higher negative offset. Now with Curve Shaper, if you guys watched my previous video, I went in depth on how Curve Shaper works. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to tune the medium frequency the high frequency and possibly the max frequency although i don't know how much of an effect this one has compared to leaving it on auto but medium frequency this is going to be the all load the full load uh frequency so this is basically 4.5 to 5 gigahertz this is going to be your cinemage r23 runs so or, or video rendering or anything anything that heats up the cpu and uses all the cores and all the threads. So this one we're going to go enable at the high temperature, which would be around like 80 degrees Celsius. That's the magnitude point. And we're going to set it to negative, and I'm gonna go put a five in here. You can do a max of 30. I think if you try to do like 40, it'll say invalid input right there, and it puts it back to 30. So if you wanna go for the most insane undervolt, you can do negative 30. For my demonstration purposes, just to show my results from the beginning of the video, I used negative five for high temperature, for medium frequency, and then for high frequency, high temperature, I did the exact same thing. We did five, and then for the max, we also did five. So 
You can do this for all of them, including low temperature, medium temperature. Low temperature won't do anything because this is basically at zero degrees. Medium temperature, the frequency, the magnitude point is around 50 degrees. So this one could be worth doing, but this is really only going to affect very lightly threaded scenarios. So I don't really see it as being something that, this is more like idling really more than anything. So those are really the only ones that matter here. You do not want to change minimum or low because that will further undervolt at the low frequencies, which can cause instability and crashing. So that's why this one typically stays auto. If anything, you could also potentially put a positive offset if you were running a more aggressive curve optimizer. So for example, if I was doing negative 30 and negative 15 or negative 20, on these and if I want my lower frequencies to be more stable I could actually do you know for for medium temperature for example I could do positive and I could do positive 5 or positive 10 or something to pull it back up to offset the negative offset that curve optimizer is applying for all the frequencies but if I want to be stable while idling, I probably want to raise these. That's the reason why with Curve Shaper, what I recommend you do with Curve Optimizer is use a lower negative offset rather than a super high negative offset, and then further shape the curve, so to speak, using either higher or lower negative offsets for your medium, high, and maximum frequencies. These are the settings that I used to get to 5.9 gigahertz. I will note that this is on an air cooler. I'm using a Deepcool AK620, and so far it has been fully stable. So the results from the live streams that I've done recently, those multi-hour live streams were using this, like this CPU as configured here. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.